Hi everyone and welcome, it's Melissa from Indo Empowered and today we're going to be talking all about pregnancy, getting pregnant, why it's so hard, what are the challenges and really nut out some of the things that you could do to help support your body a little bit more in getting pregnant. So if you're here with me today, we'd love to hear from you if you've got any questions along the way or if you see this later and you want to know something in particular that I've talked about, feel free to send me a message, private message me, anything and I'm here to help. Okay, so we're just going to jump on over to our screen. All right, so what is going on? Why is your body struggling to get pregnant? Why are you struggling to hold a pregnancy? Maybe you've had a few miscarriages. Maybe it feels like a never-ending struggle just to get pregnant. So we're going to explore some of these ideas. The first thing I guess that I want to give you a visual on is... Your body is like a house and you've got the front door and you're inviting a baby into this house. So as a guest that's coming into your house and a baby in this example, there are things that your baby needs and wants as to why it would move into this house. So if there are things that the house doesn't have, then it's not going to feel as comfortable. And so I'm going to give you this really, really simple example. But if you imagine a house that has no furniture, um, you know, maybe it's cold in there, there's no heating, maybe there's no water, the water hasn't been turned on, there's no lights on, it's just not a very cozy place to be. Now, if we take this example as your house being your body, we convert these ideas into maybe there is a lot of stress going on inside of your cells. Maybe you are feeling quite stressed. There is anxiety going on. It's not a very welcoming place to move into. Maybe there is a deficiency of nutrients. So maybe your body doesn't have all the things that baby wants. So, you know, as simple as saying no furniture, these are things that we kind of need and things that make a home nice to be in. So if there is lack of nutrients in that space, well, your baby is not going to want to move into that. Maybe there is a high toxin load in your body. And so the baby is going, well, I don't want to move in there. That's a toxic environment. It's not nice to be in there. So these are just some ideas for you to kind of think about on a broader scale in terms of well, why might your baby not want to move into that space. If you have had miscarriages or you've, you know, not had a successful pregnancy, then perhaps looking at these as well and looking at, well, you know, maybe that's why it hasn't been a favorable space and what could be possibly triggering that. So we're going to dive into this a little bit more. So some of the key things that your body needs to have to have a successful pregnancy is to reduce the inflammation. So we're going to start off with kind of the process of actually getting pregnant to, to begin with. And if you think about, I'm just going to draw a really simple, so this is kind of rough indication of your uterus and your fallopian tubes, and here are your ovaries. Now, if you imagine a lot of inflammation going on here, Oftentimes that inflammation is because the endometriosis lesions have settled in these fallopian tubes or perhaps on the ovaries themselves, which will make it very difficult 
And the reason it's difficult is because these guys create inflammation in the body. And inflammation means swelling, which means that these tubes become blocked up. And then the little spermy dude is not going to be able to get through. They're getting blocked by that inflammation. So what we want to do is reduce this inflammatory response that is going on here. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. Obviously, we can look at our entire reach technique and what is driving inflammation in your body. So, you know, is it what you're eating? So are there foods that are creating an inflammatory response in your body? What foods could you eat that reduce that inflammatory response? Maybe you're exercising in a way which drives inflammation or cortisol spikes in your in your body and that cortisol is going to drive inflammation. Maybe you just have inflamed thoughts that trigger inflammatory responses in your body. Inflamed thoughts, well think of feeling angry, feeling, you know, worked up about something, something that happened to you in the past. Those are inflammatory thoughts and that is going to create a cascade of inflammation in your body. Maybe you have toxins in the body that are triggering more of an inflammatory response in the body and so those are driving inflammatory mediators in this area. So inflammation is something that you want to look at and lowering that inflammatory response in your body. Um, and my REACH technique does this very effectively. The other side of infertility can be hormone imbalances. So oftentimes, women with endo have got an imbalance where they have too much estrogen and not enough progesterone. And there's a number of reasons for this, but the inflammation actually correlates to this because when your body is inflamed, you release histamine, and histamine is a driver for estrogen. So it's all a big loop, as is everything in the body. But what we want to do is get this hormone balance back on track. So we actually want to lower estrogen and increase progesterone. Now you can do this naturally with tools to support you. So for instance, lowering estrogen, you can take uh, supplements like DIM or calcium deglucurate, these can support your body to eliminate some of those xenoestrogens. You can take a progesterone cream or something to support your progesterone building. However, my thing is, well, why is this imbalance occurring in the first place? So having this imbalance is, yes, possible to rectify and support your body, but we need to question why is that imbalance occurring. And to me, it goes a little bit deeper than just looking at the symptom of hormone imbalance and actually looking at your liver and the liver health. So your liver is responsible for your hormone balance. And if the liver isn't functioning as well, then it is more likely that you will have this imbalance going on. However, there is another factor with this, and that is anxiety or stress. Now, when you are in a state of anxiety and stress, which, look, it's kind of ironic because they always say, oh, you want to get pregnant, you should just de-stress. But when you're trying to get pregnant, it's very difficult to not feel anxious and not feel stressed when it's not working, when you're trying every month, when you're going through that anxiety of, you know, not seeing the pregnancy sign, I can just imagine that that doesn't encourage you to not feel stressed. So working on this and working on perhaps shifting your perspective on the experience of trying to get pregnant to something that doesn't involve feeling anxious and stressed is a key thing. Now, when you have anxiety and stress, it triggers a release of cortisol in the body. Now cortisol and stress itself has a number of different reactions in the body. And 
One of those is to reduce blood flow to what it considers non-important functions. So your blood vessels actually become slightly closed and restrict blood flow. You'll also find that your digestion suffers, which means your absorption of nutrients and minerals and things is not going to happen, or not as well. Obviously, it does happen, but not as well. And so all the healthy things that you might be eating are not getting to where they need to go. Um, and when you have this scenario, you are also using up a lot more of the fats in your, in your diet. And fats are what make up all your hormones. So all of the various hormones in your body that you need, they all use fats to make those hormones. And there's cortisol and there's estrogens and there's progesterones and there's all these other hormones. Now, when you have got high cortisol going on and there's a limited amount of these good fats, well, it's going to give it all to cortisol because it's saying well I've got a shortage and I'm currently using a lot of cortisol and I need to make more of this because I'm stressing out it's going to supply that cortisol first and inevitably that means that your progesterone levels run really low so it's it doesn't have the tools or the fats to make those progesterones and so your progesterone becomes really low. Now the reason estrogens still remain high is because estrogens are often, there's often an imbalance when we come off synthetic hormones where naturally estrogens peak up. And the reason for that is these are called xenoestrogens. And they're driven by environmental toxins. They can be caused by the synthetic pills or being on any kind of synthetic hormones will naturally create this imbalance afterwards. So it's much harder to get rid of those excess estrogens in the body. There's a number of different factors for this, but this is just to give you an overview of what's happening. So coming back to our infertility and, and what's going on with that, if you look at this imbalance, this hormone imbalance, the reason this is important is for you to hold on to a pregnancy. <laughs> That's my silly picture. She's very pregnant. <laughs> um, it's, it's important that you have enough progesterone. If you do not have enough progesterone, this is why one of the reasons would be that there is not enough progesterone is why you may have miscarriages. So if you don't have enough, it's very easy for you to have miscarriages. There are many, many reasons for miscarriages. So I'd like you to expand on the idea and sort of think about it a little bit more like nature. And sometimes it's just not meant to be. Sometimes maybe the child that you were creating wasn't well and so the body will naturally get rid of something that isn't well so it isn't always just that there's something wrong with you or something wrong with your imbalances it might just be that those cells that that fetus that was produced wasn't healthy and so your body goes well this isn't a good idea so I know that's very difficult to hear and I know that's very hard when you're trying and, and you know we put so much faith on, on having a baby but actually miscarriages happen a lot more often than we might realize. So this is a factor and certainly is, is one of many. So coming back to our house analogy, we want to increase these nutrients to support baby and making sure that baby has everything. And one of those is looking at that stress anxiety side. So obviously look, we looked at that and the kind of balance between the different hormones. The other one is the nutrients. So there's some key nutrients that your body needs. And I don't recommend just supplementing with this. I do recommend getting this from your food. And interestingly enough, when you look at these, 
a lot of these actually directly help the liver. So when you support your liver, you're also supporting a healthy pregnancy. Now, most of these foods, if you look at this list, you can get very easily from your food. And there are some key foods that I highly recommend you incorporate into your diet. And those are your greens, so your dark leafy greens. And I want you to expand beyond just stuff you can buy in the supermarket. You know, try and find things outside of that. Some ex examples is Miner's Lettuce, which is very high in folate and very easy to grow yourself. The other one is Dandelion Leaves. So very, very easy to get because it's a weed. <laughs> Um, but any kind of herbs are going to be really beneficial. They also have a lot of antioxidants and bioflavonoids, which are really good at detoxing your body. So you want to incorporate lots, lots more of those. The other one that you want to incorporate more of is your antioxidants. They will help reduce inflammation. So inflammation, as we know, can be the reason for the blockages and the restriction in your body. So we want to reduce inflammation. And this means increasing your alkalizing foods. So the greens are one of them. And lemons. And any kind of antioxidants. So cacao powder. It's really, really strong antioxidant. But interesting things like parsley is a, is a really good antioxidant. So those are some of the things that you want to incorporate. Um, iodine, you probably want to get that from some kind of seaweeds. And you can get seaweed powders like spirulina or chlorella, something like that, which will be really helpful for your levels on those. Okay, now this gives you an overview of some of the things that might be going on as to why your body might be struggling with um, getting pregnant, holding a pregnancy. So I hope this is helpful. Now, I can tell you that there is interesting phenomenon that can happen with pregnancy. So sometimes women actually have one side open and one side is blocked. And maybe it's actually that this ovary, let me just redraw this one. This ovary is the healthier ovary. Maybe this one's got you know, lots of endogrowths on it and things going on. This fallopian tube here can actually swing all the way around to fertilize this ovary, which is wonderful news because we often have this idea that these things are kind of stuck in the same places and they live in those places. All of the stuff in the abdominal area moves around and if it's not moving around, that can be also an inhibitor for you to get pregnant. So if this is, say, stuck with adhesions along here or here, that can be a reason why you might also be struggling to get pregnant because these things are meant to be able to move and flex. Now, if you have got adhesions, I highly recommend doing some kind of methods or something to alleviate those adhesions. I have done a whole article on reducing adhesions after surgery because with every surgery your body develops adhesions. But here are some ideas that you can do to alleviate adhesions. So adhesions will restrict movement and will also make sex quite painful. So you really want to reduce those adhesions and that sticking together of organs which is very, very painful. So to reduce adhesions, I recommend some kind of massage therapy. I have got a free mind massage video on my YouTube channel, and um, you can I'll try to, I'll pop it below for you as well. But that is 
a very easy way to start. You can go and see an Arvigo therapist. So an Arvigo therapist, basically, they practice my massage and they will give you a lot more depth and a lot more connection to your body. So Arvigo therapy is quite different to standard massage. Um, they really look at the whole body and connecting with the uterus and it's, it's a very spiritual type of practice. You can also go and see a pelvic floor therapist. And if you can't do any of these things, if you don't have the financial means or you live in a remote location, you can just practice your own form of massage. So it's really about just moving the area and creating a little bit of blood flow. It's not about high pressure. It's really about creating lymphatic flow. So lymphatic flow is the stuff that removes all the waste and the liquids that you don't want. So um, that's what I recommend for the lymphatic movement is, is that massage where you basically want to have blood flow coming into the uterus and moving out. And this is where the Mayan massage um, technique is quite easy to follow and you kind of get the idea from that. All right. Um, so that is what you can do for adhesions. You can also take supplements called seropeptase, which I do highly recommend. Um, you can find it on my website, but I will pop a link for you below. And this basically removes... Um, the, the matter that's in your body, so all that, those adhesions that form, it, it can remove those more easily for you. Um, you do have to take seropeptase quite strictly, so it's got to be on an empty tummy and bef before food, so an hour before food, and you start off slow, so you take one tablet three times a day and you can increase that to three tablets times a day so it's, it's really about connecting with where you're at and, and taking that quite slowly so those are just some ideas and some suggestions obviously getting pregnant there's a lot more to it there's a lot of components to look at uh, the reach technique that I recommend will go through all of it including the mind-body connection and what stresses you know you out particularly um, looking at connections to maybe your upbringing, your mom, maybe a mother figure, you know, what sort of emotional blocks might exist around that. And, you know, if you don't, if you have all of that stuff there, it's your body is just naturally blocking your ability to get pregnant because there's some kind of fear, there. there's some kind of um, limitation there that is quite important. So oftentimes we disregard the mind-body stuff, but it's really, really key. So if you haven't had a chance, check out my website and look up the REACH technique. There's a whole page dedicated to my technique. And we look at all the components in managing endometriosis holistically. When you manage endometriosis holistically, you don't just look at diet. It's way beyond that. You need to look at your whole life, your whole perspective of life and all the components within that because... Your body doesn't just operate in one little vacuum. Everything that surrounds you has an impact. So have a look at that. Check out my website if you haven't already. It's endoempowered.com. And if you have any questions, if you want more insight on getting pregnant, if you want to find out about my program, feel free to reach out to me. You can email me at melissa at endoempowered.com. I'm happy to jump on a call with you if there's specific questions or situations or your personal stuff that might be going on. Maybe you've got particular hormone imbalances and you're not sure what to do. Feel free to reach out to me. I want to help you and I've managed to get lots and lots of women pregnant around the world and it's very rewarding to, to allow you to do that because I know how painful that journey can be. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to catching up with you again next week. Bye.